Hi, my name is Chuck. Uh, this is my first how-to video, so if I have any screw-ups, please forgive me. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video is I am currently in the process of building my own arcade machine, which I'm very excited about. My kids and I, are, um, I have two children, and we're going to have a project together again to build this machine. And my son, of course, loves all the various video games that you know are way, way older than he would have experienced otherwise. So he's very excited to learn about all these old games and old systems. Anyway, I built myself a prototype board um, to be able to begin programming lighting sequences and so forth. Um, but also, if you're looking to build an arcade, I would highly recommend you build a prototype because you may run into issues that you didn't consider otherwise, like a spinner should not go behind a trackball. Uh, when people are playing games like Golden Tee, they have a habit of slamming the trackball forward, and if the spinner's right there, they're going to kind of smash their fingers. So I'm really glad I built the prototype because now I get to make the final product that much better. Now, I did use um, all the parts that I got are from the company Altamark. Um, these guys up here, um, www ultimarc.com amazing products um, the part that the only part or question I've had everything's been extremely simple to hook up most of their documentation has been great one issue I ran into is on their website they'll mention that their IPAC ultimate IO controller um, looks like this thing it is an amazing controller it has tons of buttons, tons of joystick controls, trackball controls. Now I chose to use USB um, for most of the joysticks and trackballs, but this board could handle it at all, all of it by itself if it wanted to. The one thing it did mention though was that it's able to handle high power LED strips um, versus just the individual buttons. So I was trying to find more information on that and I could not. I uh, checked YouTube could not find any videos telling me exactly what I needed to know. Now luckily Andy over at Altamark was able to answer my specific question. I had emailed him and said, hey look, is that what those little screw-on parts on the board are made for? And he answered yes. Um, so I was able to figure out from that how to get my um, little Ikea, um, where's the right side here, deodor lights uh, I think that's how you say it, dealer lights to work as marquee lights. Um, the reason why I wanted to have the, mar the deodor lights on the controller for the marquee is because I didn't want to do the traditional way of just having a UV light behind the, uh, behind the marquee because then it's always on. If the arcade's plugged in and the switch is on, it's going to be on, even if the computer's off. I wanted my marquee to be controlled directly by the computer. The other reason why is if I'm in, in the jukebox mode, I want the marquee to dance to the music just like the rest of the buttons. Also, if you're playing like a game with like cop cars and stuff, I want the marquee to have you know red and blue wigwag lights like a cop car. So I just want to be able to play with the colors on the marquee and have it be controlled by the arcade console's front end. Um, so to do that, what I was able to do, um, let me pull up my little pictures here so I can follow along. So basically what's um, what you would need to do first is the, from Ikea, the set comes with this wire. Um, and normally the connector is installed on this end, the one that looks like that. So that you cut off. Then you split the wires apart, and then on this part of the connector, you have to look real careful there. You won't be able to see all this video, but if you have one and you look at this part, there are letters for each wire. It goes in the order of W, G, B, R. The G, B, R is pretty obvious. That's the green, blue, and red. The W is for a 12-watt power supply. Now, the problem is the ultimate I.O. board. These screw-on panels right here and right here only handle 5 volts. So what Andy was able to confirm for me is I can use an outside power source for the 12 volts and just not use the screw holes for the 5 volts. So first thing that I did is I took 
um, a Molex connector from inside my computer right here and I took the yellow wire. The yellow wire signifies the 12 volts. So I was able to solder that and splice that. Now before anybody notices, yes, the computer case is off, but the other end of the wire is only taped, so I'll be able to feed it through in my final version. Um, after I've set up the Molex connector on the other end, well, before I do that, I take these wires, and the one that I identified on here is the W wire, which is the 12 volt wire. I take a Sharpie and I color that wire black. I then look um, the next wire in the sequence is the green wire. I put a little green dot on that with a green Sharpie. You see where I'm going with this. The next wire was the blue Sharpie and then the last wire is the red Sharpie. Now in my case again I want wigwag so I'm using both channels of the screw downs. So on my after my Molex connector I take the black wire from each set of these and I splice them together and right now they're just taped and as you can see up here I just have the black wire intersecting the two wires that I label black on this type. Afterwards I just go to the board and as you can see the board's messy again this is just prototype stage right now to make sure everything works building the full cabinet tomorrow very excited. So then as you can see the yellow wires or the white wires are going just into those little screw panels and now you can see um, you can see how they're labeled from the top here you will not use the first screw on either side then the colors go the one is red and over here the 49 is red over here the two is green and the 50 is green and the 3 is blue and the 51 is blue so once you've got those screwed in you can then you know just like normal plug that in and you should be good to go um, I've been able to put two of these chained together again I'm currently only using four now as long as it doesn't go over one amp you should be able to add the lights until you get near one amp, but do not go over one amp. Um, so then once that's connected, I was able to power it up. And you can see here, you're getting kind of a reflection in the screen, but those will be my marquee lights. Um, this next picture is just a snapshot of when I had Frogger pause because my attract mode basically goes through the colors of each lights and you can see that a couple of the little LEDs are white because they do a chasing pattern. Um, in my case my marquee lights I've coded them to match what the uh, P2 start button is um, but you can animate it however you'd like. When you're setting it up in the AltaArc software um, or in my case LED blinky and I'm doing the generate um, input map what I did is I set, um, when I'm setting up the label, um, I used marquee one and then marquee two, where you would normally use like P2 start or one up, you know, whatever. I use simply marquee one and marquee two. The, once you've made those, then it should show up in the rest of the layouts and everything like that. Again, my, what I was working for is to use the IKEA deodors, the IPAC Ultimate IO board, and LED Blinky all in concert with each other. Now one thing to be aware of is when you're planning your LED layouts, because you're going to use these high voltage ones, make sure to leave the top pinouts for 1, 2, and 3 and the top pinouts for 49, 50, and 51 available because of in this case it's either or either this one or this one or this one or this one you so if you're going to use high power use the screw holes leave the other ones available there is a setting also in the Ultimark software configuration where you have to specify that there you are using high power LEDs and that will make sure that they're getting enough power to those screw holes so if you guys have any questions let me know uh, comment below again um, there will be more coming for the um, finished product I'm again very excited but again if you're looking to be, get into this at all and build your own system I highly recommend Ultimark 
Um, everything's been great. Everything's been delivered on time, and everything's been as promised. Um, I've gotten a spinner, a trackball, two ultra uh, stick 360s, which are very nice devices, and like 27, something like that, 26 LED um, uh, push button lights. Um, also, even the trackball, I can color the lights on that. So again, very excited to get this project finished and uh, have videos and photos for you uh, on the entire build soon.